I'm now joined on the sofa um, by researchers from the from University College London. So welcome. Um, who, who are you, and what are you uh, exhibiting today? Well, uh, I'm Professor Tamar Makin. Uh, we're actually uh, now in Cambridge University, mm -hmm. MRC Cognition Brain Unit. Uh, and uh, together with Danny, who's been my collaborator for the last four years, uh, we run re research on augmentation. So motor augmentation aims to enhance people's bodies, um, passing, suppressing beyond the flesh and blood limitations uh, that we were born with in order to allow people to do more with their bodies. And uh, Danny, who would introduce herself, would this yep. herself? Hi. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm Danny Claude. Um, I'm a designer. And I designed uh, the Third Thumb, uh, which is a um, 3D printed uh, augmentation device for the hand. Uh, it's controlled with the toes. I don't know if you guys can see. <laughs> so I've got pressure sensors underneath my big toes, and I'm doing the two degrees of freedom of the Third Thumb. Um, the Third Thumb was um, my graduate work from my master's at the Royal College of Art, uh -huh. um, where I made my first prototype. I'm now probably on prototype 350. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and started collaborating uh, with Tamar uh, after she saw it on online, actually. Yeah. Fantastic. <laughs> wow, what a cool collaboration. So, so tell us more about how it works then. So you've got your thumb, it, your your toe is what's controlling it. Yes, yes. So I've got little pressure sensors um, underneath my big toes, inside my shoes, um, and this uh, speaks to these uh, kind of little ch computer chips uh, around my ankles, which then wire wirelessly connects to up here. Yep. And this is all just battery packs because batteries are the, the challenging uh, big big devices. Yeah. Um, and then that's connected to uh, the motors on the wrist, which is controlling um, the third thumb. But yeah, design everything myself and 3D print everything. Um, so we're actually on our stand. We've got our 3D printer um, that I print all the thumbs. With. Great, amazing. So why did you want to come up with something like this? What was the inspiration? Um, yeah, so I, I design prosthetic arms as well. Mm -hmm. um, so I work with the Alternative Limb Project also. And um, I really wanted to understand what it was like to you know, I want to investigate the relationship that forms between um, the wearer and a prosthesis. Mm. Um, it's a really unique product um, and, uh, and this kind of really unique relationship forms. Um, and I wanted to experience it for myself. So I very much just wanted to try it out for myself first mm. um, for my master's project. And then um, I didn't realize how much uh, of an impact it could have uh, in neuroscience research. Yeah. So prostheses then are, you know, um, either robotic or kind of um, non-electronic devices or items that we have on our bodies that represent a kind of a, a new limb or a replacement limb, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we've got, um, I mean, the two kind of main areas, I guess, are congenital one-handers, so people born with one arm uh, or no arms, um, or people who have suffered a loss of an arm. Mm -hmm. um, and those are very different kind of people to design prosthes prosthetics for. Uh, we actually research them in the lab as well. Yeah. So how does your research sort of interact with, with yours? Um, so... When I first met Danny, um, I got a great big, you know, funding uh, grant yeah. in order to um, explore what happens to um, the human brain when we start um, controlling a body part we've never had before, because there's very rich, complicated questions. Um, for example, if you use your toes in order to control um, a third thumb together with your hand, is your toe going to become more like a hand? Mm -hmm. And then if you need to use it again, it's like a toe, for example, when you're walking home, are you going to be a bit more clumsy? So there's lots of questions about how the brain adapts to controlling this new body part and how it finds a way to do it very efficiently. Uh, and we, with that question in mind, I was looking for a collaborator. Uh, and for me as a neuroscientist, I wanted a technology that is very versatile, so people could do whatever they want with it, not just what we can do in the lab. And really important for me that people can take it home with them and use it throughout the day. And the uh, only uh, technology that was at that level of versatile readiness was coming from Danny. Amazing. So what sort of um, findings have you observed then in terms of how people's brains adapt to having, in this case, a third thumb? So we've learned so much since starting to work with Danny. One really important result for us is that if you use your thumb, Danny can demonstrate, if you use your thumb together with your hand, you can grasp objects with various um, fingers and configurations. Uh, and that means that you're changing radically the way you use your own hand in daily life. Mm -hmm. And we found that this has direct impact on how the brain represents the hand because you're radically changing the way you use your hand. Um, in other studies, we were trying to understand how the brain learns to 
create this collaboration between the toes and the hand and we've learned that it comes up with really creative ways to substitute the information kind of in this gap between the feet and the hand. We're running a lot of research with fMRI to look at how the brain responds and here we're really lucky because Danny has designed for us a thumb that is MRI safe so we actually put people in the scanner and see how they control the thumb if it's the first time they control it if they control it after they've learned to use it and become experts. And how long does that learning take? So this is what we're studying yeah. in the Royal Society uh, <coughs> in this week. So we set <laughs> yeah. up a little challenge, oh, wow. uh, which is um, can anyone learn to use the thumb within one minute or less? We've got two sizes. We've got, I've, I've made some kids size ones as well, especially for the Royal Society. Yeah, awesome. and, we're, and we've got some adult ones as well. Yeah. So, so far we looked at, I think, 400 uh, visitors. Yeah. Uh, and only three out of the 400 was unable to learn to use the thumb within a minute. Wow, gosh. So will you take that data and, you know, make that scientific and kind of publish yes. this research? Absolutely. Fantastic. And this is where, the, this is where uh, we really get to benefit from the Royal Society, not just by exposing people to our ideas and, you know, and, and the importance of this technology and introducing people to this really novel uh, uh, technology and consequences on the brain, but we can also get a little something back for the scientific community. Yeah, absolutely. So what have some of the public's reactions been to suddenly having an extra thumb? Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's been good. I mean, the, the reactions are always are always quite uh, quite fun. Um, and uh, yeah, it's, it's always the, the little kids that are really kind of like not not quite sure it's at the start, but then absolutely love it by the end. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, we've had lots of questions. We've also got a 3D printer printing. Um, and yeah, everyone picks it up so well and yeah, really enjoying it, which is great. Yeah, awesome. What sort of questions have people asked you? Um, yeah, I've just I've, I've kind of been more about the, by the three D printer, oh, yeah. Um, and um, yeah, I can't think of any off the top of my head. So for for us, uh, people are really keen to understand if we want to control the thumb directly with our thoughts with the brain. Mm, sure. Yes. Yeah. And to this, I say. I really don't, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> because uh, if we want to create invasive technology, uh, we need to first get into the brain, yeah. because un unfortunately the technology that we have right now that is non-invasive just doesn't pick up enough information, yes. uh, and I'm really not keen to cut people open. Yeah. And what's more, I think there's so much more we can do with our bodies mm -hmm. that we're not exploiting for technologies such as rehabilitation technologies that I think we need to, uh, we have a lot more to explore before we need to give up and go into invasive solutions. So I for one am really excited to tell them uh, your brain controls your trolls, yeah. so therefore the brain <laughs> controls the thumb. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. just going via the toes. Yeah. yeah. Um, so what, are you, what is your hope then for this research for the third thumb? What are you hoping to achieve? Um, well, we're, um, co I've taken it to um, a couple of different conferences. Um, one uh, in particular was, was REACH, uh, which is kids with upper limb difference. So um, I actually kind of um, gave a third thumb to, uh, to lots of different kids with different kinds of hands. Um, it kind of helped extend their, the functionality of their hand to so working perhaps with patient groups like that. Um, we're also um, excited to perhaps explore uh, stroke patients as well in terms of either augmenting their, their hand that they have the best control over or additionally help with rehabil rehabilitation in terms of the control of the thumb as well. Also um, temporary um, immobilization such as breaking a wrist. Um, you know we have uh, options for kind of augmentation like crutches when you break an ankle but when you break a wrist there's not so many options. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're excited um, you know especially with all this research we're getting that it's so easy to pick up so quickly. Um, it would be great for kind of those temporary groups as well. Yeah. And in terms of the hardware, you mentioned this is, you know, one iteration of the prototype that you've been developing over a long period of time. What are the challenges in terms of creating something like this? Well, yeah, I mean, I, I've spoken to a couple of my uh, roboticist friends and, and it is, uh, you know, even if you're working on something like this, um, which is kind of on the low end, because it's it, as in terms of um, money, because I'm 3D printing everything I set myself, but as opposed to, you know, hundreds of thousands of pounds worth of um, robotics engineering, um, we still suffer with the same problems, which is kind of motor strength over size size, battery power and size, and especially wearable um, components as well. Everything has to be external to the body as opposed to uh, with a, you know, prosthetic arm designs you get to kind of hide everything uh, within kind of this area which is usually used, uh, not, is kind of empty as a, you know, we've got the socket here, then the hand and then there's kind of more space uh, internally. Um, so augmentation and wearable technology is always so challenging and then obviously, yeah, kind of making sure the body um, fits everything. <laughs> yeah. Would you like to try a mechanic version? We've just got a little manual one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> but... 
by 10, like so. Yep. Perfect. So this is just to give you a sense of how it feels like to have an extra finger. Oh, it's quite so comfy. <laughs> the, the pulleys you have here uh -huh. are ah, to control okay. the two so degrees. Yeah, two main degrees of freedom. So it's across the hand and up and down. Yes, got you. Yeah, so it's flexion extension across Give the hand um, oh. and adduction and abduction towards the, towards the finger. So, okay, so that one goes that way and this one goes this way. Amazing. Oh, could you do both at the same time? <laughs> so imagine this would have been normally controlled with your toes. <laughs> yeah, got you. I'm surprised that people can learn this in a minute. That's very impressive. My goodness. <laughs> it's much easier, much more intuitive with the toes. I oh, really, the mm. brain could sort of un... That's really interesting. Yeah, because at the moment my, my other hand is involved mm -hmm. in controlling. Doing something very non-intuitive for the hand. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but it moves really nicely. And, these and try... Oh, sorry, and try uh, meet meet your other fingers as well. So that's kind of one of the, mm -hmm. the main tasks, um, which yeah. is yeah, finger opposition, because exactly. we want you to kind of collaborate with mm -hmm. um, with the digits. We find that people, when they first try, they really just want to focus on using the thumb by itself, which yeah. is obviously not something we don't normally do with our fingers. We always kind of work together, yeah, two or three exactly. fingers together, to to do something. Yeah. Oh, it's beautiful. It's really nicely made as well. I love these, oh, um, the, the kind of hinges here, really clever. Yeah, so it's all printed in one piece. Wow, yeah. really? Yeah. And it must be quite quick to print then as well. Um, yeah, about kind of eight to ten hours. Very impressive. Yeah, which is quite quick for 3D printing. I know yeah, it doesn't absolutely. sound very fast. <laughs> wow, thank you so much for, um, for coming to show us this. Um, yeah, and good luck with your research. I can't wait to see what you come up with next. Thank you. Thank you.